Hey you, thank you so much for tuning into my channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about power. More specifically, pedal board power. Pedal board power is one of the most overlooked features on a pedal board. And not having a good power supply can cause you all kinds of nasty issues. So I reached out to the good people over at Chucks and they were nice enough to send me one of their DC7 power supplies, which to my knowledge is one of the smallest, lightest and most powerful power supplies on the market today. They also threw in some expansion kits and mounting brackets and other cool stuff, but we will get back to that later. So let's get this video moving by checking out what's in the box. All right, let's see what is inside these nice boxes. We will be starting with the DC7 power supply itself. It's a nice sticker. We have the... Oh, we have a short description of the features of the DC7 power supply. And we have this, which is ah, the cable guide. Chux is running their own system of cables. So in order to get the correct cables for your setup, this guide can come in very handy. And finally, we have the power supply itself. And look at how flat this is. One inch. Really nice and it's really light. And as the name implies, this power supply is packed with seven outlets and they are all delivering a staggering 660 milliamps per outlet. And the outlets are of course 100% isolated so you shouldn't run into any hum issues. Now the 660 milliamps from the outlets is only when the uh, outlets are set up in the 9 volt configuration. If you start bumping up the voltage on the outlet, which you can do on every outlet, the current uh, draw will be lower than the 660 milliamps. We will get back to this feature later. Next is this little box, which contains a manual, a cord for your wall outlet, and a little bag with a tool and some screws. This is for mounting the power supply underneath your pedal. If you are not using the grips, this is another solution. And finally, we have a bunch of the flex cables that allows you to connect your pedals to the power supply. All right, looking good so far. Next up is this, which is the Chux 4. This is an expansion kit for the DC7. And once again, we have the flex cable guide. And sticker. And this small little card once again with some uh, uh, features on the back and finally the expander itself which has four outlets and that means that you can hook it up to the DC7 and instead of just having seven outlets you now have 11 outlets and once again these four outlets are all delivering 660 milliamps per outlet so you have a ton of power coming from this tiny little power supply. Really cool. Finally, there is a manual for the uh, Chux 4. There is mounting tools. There is a cable and the, I believe that this cable is the one that is used to connect the uh, Chux 4 unit to the main power supply. And we have a bunch of flex cables to connect to the pedals. All right, let's take a closer look of all of the cool features of the DC7 and the Chux4 expander. Slim one inch profile and a low weight of only half a kilo. 
seven isolated DC outlets, each capable of delivering 660 milliamps at 9 volts. Select between 9, 12, 15 or 18 volts on each outlet. Charge your phone or tablet with a built-in USB connection. Expand your DC7 with the Chux 4 or Chux 8 expander kits. Global and individual status LEDs. Monitor your total load with the true power meter. The DC7 automatically detects the incoming voltage. The Chux 4 can be powered by most power supplies or even a laptop power supply or power bank with a USB-C connection. The final thing I want to mention before I start installing this unit on my pedal board is that the Chux 4 also comes in a Chux 8 version and that of course gives you 8 outputs instead of 4 and they all deliver the same 660 milliamps per outlet. As we saw in the unboxing part of the video, both of these units come pre-packed with a bunch of these flex cables. In this list, you can see what flex cables are included with these two units. So I sat down on my studio floor with my pedal board, which is now currently being powered by the DC7 and the Chux 4. There is, however, one exception. The Boss ES8 is being powered by its own power supply, the one that came with the unit because using another power supply for that will void the warranty and I'm not interested in doing that. So the Boss ES8 is running on its own power supply. Everything else is being powered by the DC7 and the Chux 4. Now I know it's a complete mess of these flex cables running all over the place, but I wanted to see what happened if I just took the power supplies, took the flex cables, put them in random places in random in the outlets of the power supply, not, wasn't thinking about anything, just plugged it in and plugged the other end into a random pedal until they were all connected and then turned it on. And I was kind of like testing if I would run into uh, hum problems or noise issues of any kind. And actually this guitar is plugged in right now to the pedal board going into the Marshall right here behind me. Some of the pedals are turned on and I'm recording and there's no noise. <laughs> Pretty amazing. These power supplies are dead quiet. Watch what happens if I turn up the volume. Now that small hissing sound that you can hear is not coming from the power supplies. You can see when I turn the volume down, which it is now, it is absolutely quiet. This is max. This is zero. That issue is coming from being in a very small room. This room is only nine square meters. And I have, my computer is standing right here. I know you can't see it, but I can reach out and touch it. It's very close. I have amps, I have cameras, I have lights. Getting away from the uh, radiation coming from these things uh, is impossible in this small room. And you can hear it when I do this. can hear that that little buzzing noise is actually changing and that means it is radiation from the computer and amps and lights and stuff going into the pickups and that's just impossible to get rid of in a small room like this. So the point is it is not coming from the power supplies as you can tell it is dead quiet when I turn down the volume control and it sounds pretty good when I turn up the volume. <laughs> So the final thing left to do is to tidy up the board and get all of the flex cables organized and get the power supplies mounted underneath the board itself. And this is a pedal train Nova 32 board 
So the nice folks over at Chux were nice enough to send me these. This is the Chux grip. It's for mounting the DC7 under this specific board. And this is the Chux mini grip. It is for mounting the Chux 4 under this specific board very easily. So let's get on with that. So I have mounted the grip on the DC7 and this is what it looks like. It was pretty easy to do. I just had to screw in the two included sc uh, screws with the Allen key that also comes with the grip. And then you can lift up your pedal train like this, slide it underneath and put it on the rail like this. And you can of course mount this anywhere you want to fit your needs. Finally, you just screw in the last two screws and that will secure the grip in place and hold your power supply nice and sturdy on the underside of your board. Now the Chux 4, that is exactly the same procedure to mount that. So there you go. So I'm done installing the power supplies on my pedal board and sorting out all of the cables and I'm really, really pleased with the result. Once again, there is no issues with hum or noise or anything. It just works. So if you are looking for a new power supply, you might want to check out the Chux DC7 and its expansion possibilities or one of the other fine power supplies that you can find on the Chux website. There's a link in the description down below. Right, thank you so much for watching my demo on the DC7. I really hope you enjoyed it. If so, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. It really means a lot to me and I will be back soon with more gear demos. Until then, power down.